Okay, I'll say no more except hand you over to Mr. Peter Kurowita, chef. For those that don't yet know him, most of you, I think the majority here do know him, but those who don't yet know him, he's based in Australia. His ancestors are based here in this country. And none of that has any effect on the kind of food <laughs> that he's going to be presenting because he will inspire you to create things that perhaps have only been lurking in the recesses of your mind or wafting across the ocean. So he's picked them up and brought them to bear on tea and gastronomy. Do enjoy and do pay attention. I'll keep them under control, don't worry. Hi, everyone. Um, there's some, that's really loud. Can we turn that down a bit? It's turning me deaf. Okay, you've got camera and we've got food and there's a few little slides that are going to come on as well. The, the slides, there's two slides which are a little bit controversial, so I've got the assistant of Dyer over there who's going to stand up and, uh, and help us with that as well. Um, today I've got half an hour, so in half an hour I've got a sous vide duck breast, I've got to make a chocolate truffle and steam some prawns. Now to do that, I've used four teas, and I'll go through them as I do. The first thing I have to do is start the process with the duck. I have two duck breasts. <clears throat> I rendered some duck fat today, and I marinated um, the, or, or pickled the duck breasts for three hours. The pickling liquid is a standard pickling liquid. Lots of people use it. It asks for juniper berries. So instead of juniper berries, I put in Earl Grey tea. Um, I'm using a thermal circulator, which is basically going to keep the temperature at 60.5 degrees, and that is for 25 minutes. So if someone can time 25 minutes from right now, we'll pull it out. Um, the result will be quite amazing. So inside there is this Dilmar Lively Lime and Orange Infusion, which I first brewed as a tea, but strained the tea out and used the leaves. Put a pinch of the leaves into this, with some duck fat and a mixture, a little bit of the actual brewed tea and some beautiful uh, duck jus that I've been making over the last two days. So that will now just gently sit in there and cook and that's going to be a duck salad. It's the last thing we have to do with that. The next, I'm going to make a chocolate truffle. Chocolate and Earl Grey go perfectly together. So to make a chocolate truffle with Earl Grey tea, you basically boil the cream or milk, well, flames. And off we go. Now the third thing I'm using is the fragrant jasmine green tea. And the fragrant jasmine green tea is going to be used to steam the prawns. I'm not going to let the tea touch the prawns. Instead, I'm going to brew a pot of strong tea in the steaming liquid so that all the vapors come up and, and enhance the, the flavor of the seafood. And this you need to put a fair bit in because we're not, we're not tasting it, we're just getting a scent of it. And it can't, well it can over brew, but again, all I'm doing is extracting the essence and the flavor. And with this bamboo steamer, the steamer will actually take on all those jasmine scents and flavors and then enhance the flavor as well. Back to here. I'm just scalding the cream. And basically what I'm gonna do is brew two teaspoons of Earl Grey, elegant Earl Grey, the Dilma elegant Earl Grey. I've got to remember to say Dilma, I'll get in trouble. I did last time, so I've learnt my lesson, Mr. Fernando. Once it comes to the boil, exactly like brewing tea, turn it off and let it seep for about five minutes. I want to try and extract all the flavour out of that. Now, if you like, and I've tried it both ways, if you like, you can actually leave the tea leaves in there, but I don't know if you can see in here, um, it, it instantly starts to turn and the, the colour starts to go, that beautiful light browny colour. I'm just stirring it as you would a cup of tea and waiting a few minutes. Now, I'm done, I'm going. No, um, I'll steam the prawns. Um, I'm only putting a tiny little bit of salt on the prawns and I want to lay the prawns out evenly onto the plate. The scent of the jasmine's already starting to come out. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, 
and then steam it. Prawns to me, five minutes at the most, so that they're still just sort of opaque in the centre. Now we're going to pretend this is five minutes because I already have one prepared. So once you have seeped and got all that flavour of the Earl Grey out of the tea, strain it, add some butter and lots of bitter chocolate. Yum. If you grate the chocolate, it's obviously going to melt a lot quicker and it'll eat, go evenly through. Now chocolate, I'll give you a bit of trivia while I've got time to talk. Actually, no, let's have another slide. I shouldn't be, I'll, I'll rave on forever. Can you put one of the slides up, please? Okay, so tea is a spice. Tea is a spice, put the leaves, the dry leaves into a pepper mill, grind it like, uh, with, with white pepper. Um, oolong's good, but then there are so many others. That, that first salon, Souchong, with the smoky flavour is fantastic. I love using that as well. A good rub, and also just with steak or chops. And again, it just gives a different flavour to a meal. People will ask, I wonder what that was? And then you can tell them. And I think sometimes you can add that tea through it, and it may not be instantly recognisable, because if it is, you're going to actually um, damage the flavour of the meat. But that, that lingering aftertaste, once you start talking about it, people are going to really go, wow, that's great. Next slide, please. Actually, I've got a button. Hang on. No, that doesn't work. There we go. Tea is a marinade. That's exactly what I've done here, okay? I've got the leftover leaves. You can use it as a marinade. It actually works perfectly well as a tenderizer. The guys that were here um, on the last talk that I did, we've actually managed to cook. We cook short ribs like this. Normally, they take 48 hours. But by using t the, the tea leaves into it, it cuts that, that um, cooking time in half. So again, you're saving time, you're adding beautiful flavour and tenderising. Now I've got to make sure I mix all this chocolate in before it goes cool, because otherwise I'm going to have chunky chocolate. Prawns. A beautiful and red and a really nice colour. And it's going to be a cold salad. So they're ready to go. I'm just going to take them out. And what I really want to know, they have a beautiful aroma of that of the jasmine, but still the prawn flavour comes through really nicely. Now, if you don't have fingers like mine, I would suggest using tongs. Okay. They're perfect. I, I hate it when people overcook prawns. You spend so much money on a prawn and then you cook the hell out of them, it's terrible. And the thing is too, because I'm not going to chill this in ice, it's actually going to keep cooking. Now for that, the chocolate's ready, I'm putting it in the fridge and I'm pulling out the finished product. So we'll do truffles with that in a minute. Now I need to make a really nice vinaigrette, so back onto the idea of using tea in in dressings. This, uh, I've got a jalapeno um, dressing here and we use it with uh, a sashimi salad. We use honey in it. So instead of honey, I've brewed the Arabian mint and honey tea and then added a tablespoon of honey into it. So what I have is slightly minty, which will go well with, with the prawns, but also complement the jasmine. And that will become the other part of my vinaigrette. So just a few drops in there. Vinaigrettes are two to one, two oil, one, one vinegar, some coriander, a little bit of grated garlic, some jalapeno, and finishing it off with a little bit of Japanese rice wine, or Chinese rice wine, actually. And I want to emulsify that. Half of this will go onto the, onto the prawn so that the flavour goes through it. And the rest will stay as a dressing. Who's keeping timing? Anyone? Who's the timer? No one. Good. Not yet. That's a good answer. Okay. So to make truffles. Now, truffles 
you need gloves because your hands are really hot and when you roll them, they're going to get very, very, uh, the chocolate will melt. So I've just got some gloves on. And I was looking around the kitchen to try and find something to put on these truffles to make them really nice and crunchy. And in the breakfast kitchen, I found Cocoa Pops. So that's what I've decided to use as the coating on my, um, on my truffles. And it's just become this beautiful ganache, which quickly roll and drop into my Cocoa Pops. And I need, um, I need one person to taste every dish as well so that you can tell, so you can tell everybody else whether it's good or not. So um, start working that out for yourselves now and um, we'll get back to you shortly. So three nice balls. I stole some gold dust from the uh, pastry kitchen, which I'll just put in. It's not mine, so I'll use lots. Look at it. Pixie dust. Okay, that's dish number one that someone has to try a bit later. Three perfectly gold truffles with cocoa pops and Earl Grey tea. Simple, really simple. Four ingredients basically, and then whatever you can steal from the pastry kitchen. So that's one done. Now the next dish is gonna be this prawn salad. So just, just remembering what we've got there. We've got a, a tea infused into the prawns. We've got tea infused into the salad. And all we have to do now is make a lovely little salad. This is a big salad to share, I think. Our, um, our Italian chef ordered a whole lot of beautiful flowers, which I stole when he wasn't looking. Put some of those on top. A little bit of lettuce, which adds a really nice color combination. I found this one dish inside the, um, inside the pastry kitchen which is really nice as well. And then just dress it with some dressing and a little bit of radish. So that's dish number two. And the third dish. Um, let's get another slide, hey? One more slide, please. Because I, I, we can talk through this now because whoever the timekeeper is will tell me when the 25 minutes is up. Next one is tenderizer. As I said, using the leftover bits of tea as a tenderizer is exactly the perfect way to give what it says there. Fall off the bone, water in the mouth, um, incredible delicate meat. And it's also very, very cost effective. A lot of, um, a lot of businesses now, I know in Australia, it's so expensive. The, the prime cuts of meat are becoming more and more expensive. So using, it, using a secondary cut, but still producing it in a way that people, people are actually pushing the sirloin to the side and eating the rib because of that, that incredible tenderness. So it's something to, to think about. All right, here we go. Tea is an oil. I discovered this just recently. From the flower of the tea bush, they're taking the seeds and then extracting oil. Now the oil is actually has a huge um, flash point, you know, over, over 180 degrees, which means you can cook meat in it. It's something a little bit different and a substitute. And this is where I'd like Dyer to have a few words about it. Even though it's not done here and the flowers aren't, there's no flowers allowed to grow on, on uh, tea trees, I think it's a good idea to think a little bit outside the box. Dyer? Yeah, in the cultivation of the grow or the growing of tea for traditional teas, we will have ensured that there are no that, that the reproductive cycle 
that is the production of flowers and seeds, will have been minimized. As I mentioned to you yesterday, when you go around the tea fields, if you see flowers and fruits, uh, flowers and seeds, that's an indication that the, that the tea field is not properly maintained. Either your plucking cycles are not okay, or your pruning cycles are not okay. Because traditionally what we try to do is to suppress the reproductive cycle and allow the vegetative cycle to expand so that you will have more and more of leaf. Now, if when you visit a tea estate, you see some seeds. If you see some seeds, then you can extract an oil from that seed, which will be akin to olive oil and can be used for purpose of cooking. But in China, they don't allow the, the traditional way of doing of producing the tea, of cultivating the tea, and they allow the tea plant to grow and produce seed. That tea plant is not Camellia sinensis. It's mm. a different plant. It's Camellia all right, but a different species. Now that is done mainly for production of the oil, not for production of tea, not for production of the traditional tea. There, the oil is the seed can be extracted to produce tea oil. And this particular uh, tea oil that you get mostly from China is used for exclusively for cooking. Thank and you. that is very much like the olive oil. So you can't get that in Sri Lanka because in Sri Lanka we try to suppress the reproductive cycle. But there in China, this particular species is grown to exclusively produce tea oil. Thanks, Di. It's just something different, I guess, when you think about um, tea and the uses of tea. Um, you could cook a dish exclusively with tea. And that gets to the next slide. Can I have the next one up, please? So as an as a aromatic, I was actually trying to pump the scent of the, uh, the berry sensation through the air conditioning duct today. And Robert was going to make a dink drink for you. But unfortunately, we weren't able to achieve that. So just imagine that. Close your eyes and imagine and smelling the berry sensation and then some incre incredible thing that Robert would have um, put up for you. So sorry, maybe next time. But the, ar the aromatic qualities are what I love to use. And it's all about the subtle flavors and the subtle hints of flavor and taste. And it's, you know, it's true, when you, when you eat something that you don't like, you block your nose, you can't taste anything. So um, it's the same thing. You've got to make sure that those aromas are around. It inspires you to eat and it inspires you to, you know, you're, to salivate. And that's what chefs love, because then you eat our food and you think we're really good. Um, and then the last, actually, there was one before that. I can talk about it. An oil, tenderizer, oh, I'll, just, I'll just tell you. There it is. Tea is a green. Tea is a dessert you've seen. You can add it to lots of things. It's a great receptor. It works really, really well with desserts. But this is another thing that I've come across. Um, and I, when I was in uh, tea trails yesterday, I went picking leaves and tried to eat them. They're a little bit too astringent, a little bit too bitter. And the reason is that it comes from a different tree, which is the Goyakuru um, leaf. But that can be used as a spinach, fried, sauteed, um, wilted, used as a garnish. And again, Daya, can you just expand on that just a little bit, please? Yeah, Goyakuru is a type of green tea that is produced essentially in Japan. The tea is grown under very heavy shade. And that gives a particular characteristic to it. You will find more chlorophyll in it. You will find more amino acids in it. And that's a very, very expensive uh, green tea that Japan produces under heavy shade. And also a particular type of cultivar that they use. So goikora is produced exclusively in Japan. We don't produce it here. It's a different cultivar. It's grown under heavy shade and it produces the tea constituents which will have given the particular character. We are, we at the TRI try to do some work on this uh, where they try to grow the tea under heavy shade and check whether we could arrive at the Goikura characteristics. Unfortunately, we were not able to. And then we found that is not only, as was explained was with Jesus, is the soil conditions, is the, is the surrounding atmospheric conditions, the climatic conditions, all that goes to produce goikora. 
So I don't think we can produce goikura in Sri Lanka, although we will have tried heavy shade. So it's a type of tea that is made in Japan. Thanks. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just interesting. To a chef, it's interesting that so many parts of this, this bush can be used and so many different varieties of it. So um, I'm going to presume 25 minutes is up. So in here, probably needs a little bit longer, but we will do it anyway. Duck breast is nice rare. So now that I have cooked this duck, it was marinating for three hours before, remember, so it will actually be beautiful. You can see there, it's pulled together, the flesh is nice and tight, it's warm enough, and the sauce has that fat, the beautiful duck fat that everyone loves to eat. Fat is flavour, we all know that, right? So it's nice to infuse some fat back into the duck, because it, if it's overcooked, it can be uh, a little bit tough. Doing it this way, you're always going to have the same result every single time. The jus that I put in had no salt at all, and that's very important when you're cooking in a bag to have reduced salt, because everything becomes more in a bag. And then the tea, and the, that basically what I'm playing with here is a little bit of duck orange. There's a little bit of orange hint there, there's a little bit of lime, a little bit of acidity, and um, what we've got is hopefully a really nice duck salad. So what I'm going to do, just over here, drain these off, pat them dry, and then prepare my little salad, which is a, just a coleslaw. Australians love coleslaw. And kiwis. Some rocket. Make it nice and peppery and hot. And again, I think Andreas ordered in these beautiful purple chive flowers, which I've also stolen. I think he's got a dish coming on soon, so um, if it's short of things, it's me, Andrea. That's, that's, that's wherever you are. Thanks, that's for eating my chocolate while I was trying to prepare it. And many other things you did to me, trying to take my duck fat off the, off the stove. You were real trouble this morning, Andreas. Okay, and now, very sharp knife. Yeah, it's perfect. Can can uh, have a look at that? Where's Mr. Cameraman? Zoom in on that. See how it's perfectly pink. It was 25 minutes. It's not like when you sear something. When you sear something, basically a lot of the flavour goes out, and it has a ring. Um, of, you know, differing cookness, if that's a word. On the outside, it'll be well done, and then as it goes through, it becomes, and you have to rest it. Whereas this is just the absolute perfect piece of pink duck, which I get to try. Juicy and tender, and the, um, the lime and the oranges come through so well. Yum. So nice, guys. So the last dish. This would go well with a cup of tea. I actually thought of this um, while I was sitting at tea trails yesterday, thinking how nice this would be, sitting there looking at the tea fields, beautiful cup of tea, a little bit of my dressing which is basically just the sauce to moisten it up. There's no tea visible in this at all, but the idea is that you can taste it all. So there's my three courses of tea using four different types of tea in 30 minutes. Thanks for coming. Now, who wants to try it? I didn't get into it.
take them in this country. Comments? <laughs> no. All right, I'll finish my mouth first. There you go. Start with the, start with the, the prawn. prawn. You know, definitely had that freshness. It kind of adds an element of green and kind of floral sweetness. Uh, the, uh, the duck is, yeah, you've got that kind of the fatty kind of sweetness and coating in your mouth, but then with the, the greens, it's just uh, and the, the coleslaw, the, the lemon and lime, yeah, yeah, and that's kind of cutting through that that oil, that kind of fattiness, which is so good. It's probably the healthy way to eat fat. <laughs> The citrus is cutting right through it. It's, it's really fantastic. But, but not in a, in a very dominant way. It's, 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 all, uh, it's there. It's, it's a very subtle, but it's, it's definitely there. So beautiful. Yes, yeah, so you taste it in the back. In the back yeah. when you That's the object, I think. You taste it in the back so that you can, you can um, you, you're still making the main ingredient the star. And that, yep. to me, is the most important thing. And I love it when people say, what's that flavor? And that's what I love. Trying to draw conversation from a meal means that it's being shared well and people are enjoying it. Chocolate truffle, and then I'll get off the stage. And it's, it's lingering on the tongue. Oh, we're well. going to yeah, share. Yeah, have to share. Lingering there. <laughs> It takes a bit of time to arrive, that one. You have to get past the cocoa pops and the gold. Mm. <laughs> I never knew cocoa pops could taste so lovely. Yeah, it's for breakfast every morning. <laughs> <laughs> a new use for cocoa pops, for sure. Yeah. Well, good. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot, and thanks for listening and being quiet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Peter Kurwitter.